Hello and welcome to part 1 of this tutorial series. In this part we are going to talk about installing and configuring the library on an ASP.NET Core web application. First, let's go ahead and create a new project. We are going to choose a web application, ASP.NET Core web application. Let's give it a friendly name. On the next screen, we are going to choose Web Application Model View Controller. After that, we hit OK. Once a project is created, it's time to install the library. Head to Tools, Packet Manager, and run the following command Install Package Quartz. Once the package is installed, now it's time to head out to startup.cs to configure the library. Let's create a method which we will be using to configure and return the instance of Quark Scheduler. We will be returning the iScheduler which is the instance of the scheduler which we will be using to start and stop our jobs, triggers, etc. The iScheduler is part of the Quartz namespace, so we need to be adding the using Quartz. Once that's done, it's time to add our configurations. Quartz accept properties in the form of a name value collection. At this time, we only need to add one property, which is a serializer type, which we'll be using binary. Let's go ahead and type that in. Also, don't forget to add the using system collection specialized. Next, we will be adding the Quartz Scheduler factory, which we will be using to create our instance of Quartz Scheduler. The Scheduler factory is part of the Quartz.implementation namespace, so we will be adding the using Quartz.implement or impl. Next, we will be getting the scheduler from the factory. The getScheduler function is asynchronous, so we need to get the result from it in order to run synchronously. All you have to do is type that result after the function getScheduler, which will give you an instance of the iScheduler. Now that we have the scheduler, we need to start it. To start the scheduler, we just have to call the method scheduler.start. Because this is an asynchronous method, we need to wait for it before we return the scheduler. Because we might end up using it before we even start the scheduler and that will throw exceptions. Now that it's done, we just need to return the scheduler. We will be using the instance returned from our configure quartz function throughout our entire application. So let's create a variable for storing it in our startup class. Once that's done, we need to initialize it in our constructor. At this point, we have an instance of Quartz Scheduler, so we can use it. In order to use the same instance throughout our entire application, we need to register the iScheduler instance as a singleton in our services. All we have to do is go into Configure Services method and add the following code, services.addSingleton and a lambda expression which returns the Quartz Scheduler. After doing this, one last step remaining is to shut down the Quartz Scheduler when the application shuts down. ASP.NET Core has a method called onShutdown, which will be called when the application shuts down. So we need to add our shutdown code inside this method. First we check if the scheduler is not already shut down, if not, then we shut it down. Once that is done, we start our application and see if it runs correctly. If the application starts up and we see the home page, then we have configured it correctly. If we have made any mistakes in the configuration, then we will get errors from Quartz library. Everything is looking ok, now it's time to create our jobs and triggers and run some background tasks. We will be doing that in the next sessions.